I'm joined today by Malcolm LeCompte, who's a retired associate professor at Elizabeth City State University and currently research co-director at the Comet Research Group. We're going to be talking today uh, really about a few different things, Malcolm, but I think the best place to start is what is known as the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, which relates to uh, sort of the uh, not incredibly distant past of Homo sapiens, but at least when it comes to known history, certainly on on the reaches of what we know. Let's start with the controversy just to get people up to speed who may not even know what it is we're talking about. What do we mean when we say the younger driest impact hypothesis? Well, there's a, a number of events that occurred, um, what we call the Holocene or the Pleistocene Holocene transition. That's a period of, at the end of the Ice Age, the last Ice Age, about 18,000 years ago, there was a period of, of warming that had some, some intervals of, of cooling and warming again. Uh, but the general trend was warming. And at about 13,000 years ago, there was actually more solar insulation than there is today. And the Earth appeared to be coming out of the Ice Age fairly rapidly. At about this time, the... Uh, it suddenly went back into a very, very cold snap. Uh, the megafauna, which had been apparently on the road to extinction or at least diminishing uh, in numbers, uh, seemed to take an abrupt nosedive in, in numbers. And there's also some evidence, although disputed, that there was some sort of reorganization of the North American Clovis culture of the time. Uh, we've got some quarries that appear to have been abandoned. And for a long time, it was either attributed to some of these uh, these events were attributed to uh, climatic conditions, uh, a pandemic of some sort, uh, or just the climate itself going back into the deep freeze. Uh, it was almost as bad for about 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 years as it was during the, the height of the Ice Age. Not quite, but, but close. And uh, during that period, uh, these events seem to have, have accelerated or, or, uh, or begun uh, right at the start of that period. And it's been a mystery as to exactly to what, what, uh, what circumstances prompted those events to occur, and whether they were related or not is a, is another question. And uh, so, Malcolm, just to, a, just to just to to summarize what you've said so far in total layman's terms for our audience, the uh, the idea is that about thirteen thousand years ago there was a decline in uh, both megafauna, large animals on the planet. Uh, as well as the, the human population. And the cause of that decline is sort of what what is the, the center of this discussion or controversy. And one possibility was that it was some kind of climactic climactic event or climactic characteristics. Uh, and then an alternative proposal to that is the what you've been working on. Am I sort of up to speed uh, as far as what we've said so far? I think it's pretty accurate. That uh, I think basically subsumes all the all those factors or, or circumstances, and the uh, the most, I guess the the original proposal of a of an extraterrestrial impact, a comet or an asteroid impact, was uh, was seen as as a uh, kind of a quick fix to explain all those those uh, particular events. I think it's probably the truth is probably more complicated than that, but uh, but that was sort of the the original driving. Uh, assumption. So this has actually become quite a controversy. Some some of my audience, if you also watch the Joe Rogan podcast, there was a, about a three hour discussion involving a number of people, Graham Hancock and Michael Shermer. And uh, uh, it, it was really quite a whole thing that I that I obviously know you're intimately familiar with, Malcolm. Uh, and this has become really quite a controversy w within within some elements of the science community. Why is this so controversial? In other words, what would be the implications of this uh, hypothesis on our understanding of human history? Well, it's got a number of of uh, of, of uh, what consequences, or if if this is if this pans out, which it looks like right now that it is, uh, it's got a number of of uh, of consequences, or at least. Uh, points to a, a number of directions that, uh, in some cases, gore people's oxes, uh, favorite favorite hypotheses or theories about what actually happened then and and uh, and the course of our history. Uh, and we're kind of beyond history here. This is, uh, I would say, a good uh, oh, uh, 
seven or eight thousand years before what we consider history uh, in uh, you know the classical realm, Eastern Mediterranean, uh, and uh, and other historic sites. So this is well before history, but it's in the I guess you'd consider kind of the Middle Neolithic. Uh, I'm not an archaeologist, so I'm sort of reaching for terms here that seem to to uh, to be descriptive. So 13,000 years ago, we have this this evolving uh, culture, and then this climate event, and uh, and there have been circa basically people have staked their reputations or careers on explaining certain elements of these of these uh, uh, these events, like the decline of the megafauna and the eventual extinction, the uh, the climate event that occurred, and uh, the possibility of a of a organizational change in the Clovis culture, which is a, a culture that inhabited North America. And there's a number of con- there's a number of controversies that attend this, whether Clovis was the first North American culture or not, um, where they came from. So there's a lot of a lot of things tied up into this. And then there's also the sort of the astronomical or, or geophysical problem of just how do how often do these events occur? And the idea that there was this significant event, if it's proven out to be as significant as as it appears to be in in the initial, uh, or at least some of the early returns, uh, how wide the extent of this this uh, event was felt. Uh, then you've got a a a condition where you've got more impacts, more significant impacts than perhaps were anticipated in the models that we're using today for predicting how often these things occur. In other words, if there was such a great impact thirteen thousand years ago that would change how likely we should consider a future impact to be. Well, it may change the models themselves because this event doesn't seem to, to, to uh, it doesn't look like the KT event in terms of, of what you find and, and, uh, and how devastating. So I guess the conclusion would be that if this thing had the effects we think it had, or at least it appears to have had, then it means that smaller impacts can be far more deadly and devastating than we had previously surmised. And that dead, these small impacts are far more likely to happen than the big KT kinds of impacts. And the KT is the dinosaur killer. And there are others, other impacts that were sort of, um, I, I don't know if you can call them minor extinction events, but uh, but have occurred through the past that are more classically big craters, big smoking holes, and uh, and they do a lot of damage to the earth. This thing doesn't appear to have, have done that. We don't quite know why. So as a non-scientist, I couldn't possibly touch every single aspect of this conversation. But there are at least a few questions that I'm curious how how uh, you might answer with regard to the, the idea of this major impact from a comet or asteroid. One is with regard to the extinction of the megafauna, right? These big animals. And I've read a number of peer reviewed scientific studies whose names would not be of particular relevance to our audience, but we can obviously put put out the the, the studies if people are interested that showed that the extinction timings of these megafauna um, were not all simultaneous. In other words, that they took really uh, some anywhere from hundreds to even a thousand years to happen. How would uh, an acute event like a comet or asteroid hitting the planet lead to extinctions over such a long period of time? In other words, wouldn't the extinctions happen much more closely to each other if it was the result of such an event? Yeah, if it was all attributed to that, yes. It looked like, I mean, from what I've seen, the, the the megafauna were sort of on their way out when this thing occurred. And I don't know why that would be, but that apparently, it may be the the the, uh, the influx of humans into the into the area undoubtedly had some effect. Mm. Just how big an effect it was is, is uh, obviously being debated. Uh, an impact of this sort, uh, where it's fairly significant, could change the ecosystem. In fact, it's it's fairly well known and and well developed theory that that uh, an impact, a large impact, can collapse the ecosystem, and that has major effects, uh, as well as just killing the animals outright. That you know, we're looking for much broader and more global aspects of this, and it's we're recognizing now that that the effects of this impact were spread over a very very wide area. So, in other words, um, it's possible that if there was an impact, the impact might have immediately uh, driven some species to extinction. And then the subsequent extinctions were as a result of the impact of the first extinctions on the food chain, for example, or on the environment. Is that roughly the idea? 
Yeah, I don't think that there, I, I suspect that uh, the number of animals killed outright is probably relatively small compared to the numbers that suffered hmm. after effects. And if you've got a population of humans that are suddenly faced with starvation, they're going to be hunting these animals as, uh, as, as their diet. If the ecosystem is collapsed, the, uh, the diet's going to be suddenly limited to the animals that are still around. They're going to be hunting uh, very aggressively. Hmm. Um, another so, one I came across, Malcolm, is that uh, there's there's a, a paper called Impact Hypothesis and North American Paleo Indians by Holiday and Meltzer, and it takes issue with uh, the younger younger Dry's impact hypothesis by saying that the Paleo Indian population decline that some believe happened and is sort of part of the evidence supporting the hypothesis is not actually something that we can definitively say happened. I mean, is that what kind of a disagreement is that? It seems like a sort of fundamental disagreement on the facts. Well, I th yeah, I think we have some very fundamental disagreements with uh, with both uh, Meltzer and Holiday. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's it's uh, it's becoming more evident that the impact is is becoming harder and harder to dispute because the evidence keeps piling up. Hmm. Uh, on the other hand, uh, whether or not how big was the impact on the Clovis culture is is a is another matter. Uh, to me, the the first order of business is to prove the impact, and that's not easy under any circumstances. So uh, that's that's sort of where I'm at is just trying to prove the impact and and uh, collect the evidence to see how broad the impact uh, effects were, and uh, and establish that. And then I think a second order question is. How did it affect the environment, the uh, the megafauna, the, and the, uh, the human population? Uh, we've got some evidence that there were, were distinct, uh, and we've got a number of archaeologists who are quite quite well respected and well known that are very much in the camp of saying that this impact explains a great deal of what they've seen, and these are good field archaeologists uh, as well. So I would say that uh, it's it's not a one-sided dispute between archaeology and and the uh, on the geophysical science of of uh, of the impact study, it's sort of a two camps of archaeologists that are in opposition, and then you've got the uh, the physical scientists who are sort of uh, developing the the evidence or disputing the evidence on one side or the other. So there's well, two. We, uh, there's two that's going on. We could talk about it for hours, but unfortunately, we don't have that much time. But I hope the audience will become at least interested enough to. Uh, research more about this. It's very, very interesting and quite a quite a controversy that that has been developing over the last five to ten years. Malcolm LeCompte, uh, current research co-director at the Comet Research Group. Thanks for talking to us about this today. My pleasure.